please subscribe to this channel and also tap the notification bell in order for you not to miss out on any of our videos. Maurice Camto's resignation letter sent to Paul Bia. On November 30th, 2011, I announced my retirement from my functions within the government of the Republic. First of all, I did it with loyalty. At the end of a Republican approach respectful of the very high office and prerogatives of the chief executive. I did so in the awareness of the duties inked to my public duties and the desire to discharge them at the end. Then I did it out of patriotism. Neither money nor honors have ever been the motive for my dedication to the service of Cameroon. No one has monopoly to patriotism as we hear people say a few times. But everyone see it and perhaps experiences it on their own way. Patriotism for me is the unconditional love of one's country, the suffering for its decadence, the aspiration for its unity and its greatness. It is neither chauvinism nor xenophobia, but an invitation to share with yourself this love for your country. An invisible thread connects in an unbroken chain all those who, through their common gestures, have forged throughout history the soul of our people. Cameroon is not and cannot be a juxtaposition of foreigners who rub shoulders. The magic that this world carries leaves in every bit of its concentrate in Africa. Every moment, every place where the spirit of those who have offered themselves that this country can happen. A force from the depths, a feeling not learned, anchors our dream of power to it. Now, here is a nation once radiant with prosperity, feared and respected in its zone of natural influence and beyond, is now trivialized, overwhelmed and all sides indifference or perhaps impotence. I grew up with the idea that Cameroon was doomed to an exceptional destiny. Attractive professional horizons abroad have more than once opened their arms to me. I never rushed there. I obtained the terminal diploma attesting to my law studies at a university in the south of France on a Friday. One day later, a Sunday in November 1983, I was in Yaoundé burning to make my modest contribution to what was then announced as the Great National Odyssey under the leadership of a man reputed to have integrity, fine literate and modern. I refused voluntary exile. This is my earth. I was born here. I intend to live there and contribute to its development and die there where time comes. In addition, I did it in fidelity to my journey and to my deep thought. My journey is not an enigma. A few benchmarks mark out my commitment. In 1979, the final year of my law studies at the University of Yaoundé, a reform of programs and the duration of studies was initiated which reduced the license from four to three years in the Faculty of Sciences and the Faculty of Letters and Human Sciences, but kept it at four years in the Faculty of Law and Economics. The latter rose up against this discrimination, which was felt all the more keenly because it had hardly been explained. The students of this faculty brought me to the head of the strike movement. We were then under the rule of an autocratic power. I did my best to speak up for my comrades, and in the end, we were successful. It was a question of principle, a fight against the injustice of which our young cadets were victims, because the reduction in the duration of studies finally extended to our faculty. In 1985, Asked to report on the work of a colleague from the University of Yaoundé, a well-known philosopher among us, on the social idea of the head of state, I ventured to make a presentation critical. The most classic exercise earned me a stay in prison, in the jails of the BMM in Kondengye. Faced with the ego quarrel which dominated the public debate some time later, I took the field and wrote two books, The Urgency of Thought and decline of politics, which expresses the deep thoughts on the political state of our society. 
In 1992, faced with the deep aspiration of our people for change, I got involved in the electoral campaign for the presidential election of that year by giving my support to the candidate of the Union of Charge, who proposed a limited mandate for a transitional period of two years in order to put in place consensual rules of the political game. In 1994, I responded to the call for national duty faced with an external danger unprecedented in our history which undermined the territorial integrity and the sovereignty of our country. The Bakasi Peninsula and the Lake Chad were occupied by foreigners, armed forces. I did not have the slightest hesitation when the head of state gave me the opportunity to serve such a high and noble cause. In 2004, I accepted to enter the government of the Republic. My disagreements over many aspects of the conduct of the country's affairs were known, but I have always thought of politics as a collective search. In the dialogue of opposites or even antagonisms of what is best for the life of a nation. This requires humility and tolerance, an ability to thwart the arrogance of temporary victors and the vanity of those who hold absolute truth. It is in this sense that I have tirelessly written since the 1990s and in the various social media platforms that consultation must be at the heart of the conduct of national policy because it imposes respect for those who think differently, presumption that he is endowed with some intelligence, that he is the bearer of a possible contribution to the concerted quest for solutions of collective progress. We cannot practice political ostracism and claim to work for the good of a people as a whole. This is why it has always seemed essential to me to build bridges between compatriots of different political stripes. There will be no big night when Cameroon will suddenly be emptied of all those who don't like and where only those who think like us will remain. On this basis of reflection, I was determined to make my full contribution to the success of the seven-year period which began in 2004 and which was nicely baptized seven-year period of great ambitions. I dreamed of the President of the Republic as a builder. He had to go down in history in this stature because I do not wish for my country to backslash of the infinite recommences punctuated by human failures. And where history begins with each new head of state, if he emerged from nothing, so I made a full commitment and served with dedication and absolute loyalty. Finally, I took the decision of November 30, 2011 for the future. The multiple challenges of the globalized world shake even the old and rich nations. We have not identified those with which Cameroon will be confronted. As a result, nowhere are we preparing the country to meet them.